that Viles fermions are um, ubiquitous in condensed matter physics because every time reversal invariant point when you have spin orbit coupling <coughs> and no inversion symmetry is a Viles fermion but then we argued that of course they don't need to be stuck at time reversal invariant points because they don't need any symmetry to exist and we understood that through several ways such as um, the churn number of a vial node, the monopole, um, the Dirac string, etc., etc., etc. So now I want to understand it through one last way which brings you to the um, experimental consequence of the fact that you've got this monopole number and that's that's um, the Fermi arcs. So basically, consider a system without any symmetry again, no time reversal, nothing, and consider you having just one vial in the bulk. Okay? Yes, you're right. You're right. Try this one. Ah, better. Okay. So think of you having just one vial fermion. This is, a, this is periodic boundary conditions for now in Kx, Ky, Ky, Kx, Kz. Putting periodic boundary conditions everywhere. And I'm, think I, I'm considering the situation where you have one vial fermion. Now, of course, we understood last time that you can't have just one because you would have a Dirac string, which we explicitly solved. Um, coming out of the Fermi surface around it. Um, but there's another way of understanding you can't have just one by this argument, okay? So if there's a vial here, the Hamiltonian around this point is Ki sigma i, which I'm gonna expand in Kx sigma x plus Kz sigma z plus, sorry, plus Ky sigma y plus Kz sigma z, okay? And the vial happens at some, if you think of this, K as being the origin of Kz at some big Kz, and this is just the difference between this Kz, right? This is the, the degeneracy point, and this is just the difference between the big Kz and, and, um, and um, um, the momentum where you want to look at. So for example, right here, it looks something like this. This is big Kz at which the vial is. I could pick my origin there, but I don't want to. And this is small kz, okay, if I look at, the, at some small kz. Okay, and I'm just gonna re rewrite this as considering this to be a parameter. Kx sigma x plus ky sigma y plus m sigma z, where m is just kz. And I'm gonna ask, what is this Hamiltonian well, it's a 2D Hamiltonian that depends on some parameter m. And what are its whole conductances? It's a gapped Hamiltonian in this parameter m because the spectrum is plus minus m squared plus kz plus kx squared plus kz squared plus ky squared, sorry. It's a gapped Hamiltonian at any m not equal to zero. Of course, m equals to zero exactly the vowel node. So what are its whole conductances for m less than zero. Since so the gap Hamiltonian, I can compute the whole conductance of the occupied band. What is the whole conductance for m or the churn number for m equals zero and m greater than zero? What are they? So this is what Titus was also, also asked you. It was on that board there. So what are they? What's the whole conductance of this? This is a 2D Hamiltonian as a function of Kx and Ky. It depends on some parameter m. What's the whole conductance of it? Or the Chern number? Three, four? So should we compute it? Okay, so if I, I can compute fxy, which is the wave function of the occupied States, so this, as a function of this mass parameter, the bands look like this. It's got a, it's got a valence band. I can compute the following quantity. 
partial kx of the wave function, partial ky of the wave function, minus x goes to y. Okay, minus x goes to y. This is dependent on k. And you'll find that this is m over square root of m squared plus k squared, where k squared is just kx squared plus ky squared. Okay, now if I integrate this fxy of k over d2k, okay, which is kx, k, y, up to some factor which you choose correctly, you're going to get that this is one half the sine of the mass. And the way you get the sine of the mass is you notice there's the mass here and the square root of the mass squared. Okay? You pick up only the k equals zero component. This will kind of die. Um, or actually, this is to the three halves. Uh, no, it's to the half. Something like this. Anyways, it's this. It's one half the sine of the mass, what you get in the end. Okay? That's correct. So, this is correct. Okay? When you integrate, you get this, this just m over square root of m squared, which is just the sine of the mass with one half. Does this look familiar? Okay. So, that means <coughs> that if I look below the, the vowel node, every kz plane below the vowel node, AZ, any kz constant plane below the vowel node is a plane of constant mass in this parameter language and has whole conductance what? Hmm? Below and above. This is minus one half and above. Okay, now these one halves are kind of, you know, arbitrary in the sense that I only know what's happening around this node. So I don't know what's happening somewhere else in the, in the Brion zone. So they're arbitrary in the sense that they're one half with respect to some value that is happening in somewhere else in the Brion zone. Okay? That value has to be an odd multiple of one half for reasons that we can go through. But the point is, below and above, this is minus one half with respect to some value, and this is one half with respect to the same value because the only band closing that happens between kz negative and kz positive or between m negative and m positive is exactly the vowel node. So anything else in the Brillouin zone at higher energies doesn't really change. So the only change has to come from this vowel node. And this tells me that there's a change in churn number or, or whole conductance of one in between below and above. OK? So <clears throat> that means that if below, you see, one half doesn't really make sense. There's a theorem that tells you that you can't have really one half. You can't have fractional Schur numbers in, in a non-interacting system. So this one half is really one half with respect to a set, va uh, you know, with respect to an offset value of another one half. But the point is, between this plane and this plane, while you go through the vowel node, there's a change in the whole conductors of one. Okay? So let's just, by just knowing this, let's revisit the following thing. Now, we're going to do we're going to redraw our Brillouin zone, except now I'm going to pick a, a periodic boundary condition in the y direction, a periodic boundary condition in the k in the z direction, and open boundary conditions in the x direction. Okay? So this is open. So now I can have surface states. Okay? Since I open my boundary condition. Now for kz less than zero, zero meaning this value of the vowel note. So for k for planes below this vowel note, so my vowel note sits here. For planes below this vowel note, let me take the whole conductance to be zero. As I said, it's minus one half with an offset. I can just pick it to be zero. And for k greater than zero, then the whole conductance will be what? One. one. 
So that means that below the vowel node, I will have no quantum Hall effect for every KZ plane below the vowel node, or above the vowel node, I will have a quantum Hall effect for every KZ plane. Make sense? Okay, so every KZ plane above the vowel node has a quantum Hall effect, which means what? What has it got? If I just you know, forget about the vowel node, I just have the information that above the vowel node, every KZ plane has a quantum Hall effect, so let me just focus on one KZ plane, okay? And ask you what, for one KZ plane, so at fixed KZ, as a function of KY, how does the energy spectrum look, okay? Well, this has a quantum Hall effect, right? It's a 2D plane at fixed KZ. KY is periodic boundary condition. X is open boundary condition. What does a quantum Hall effect have on one edge? A what? Yes. And how does it look? Yes. One chiral edge state on this edge, another one on the other edge. OK? This chiral edge state has what? One Fermi point, right? It's wherever you've got your energy is one Fermi point. So in the Brion zone of the surface, can you guys see here? Everybody can see? No? OK, maybe not, yeah. In the Brion zone of the surface, which is KZ, KX, KY, sorry, here, this is the surface Brion zone. This is where the vowel node was, say, somewhere. The moment I go away from the vowel node, this open boundary conditions, I have a Fermi point at every KZ, right? So I have a Fermi point at every KZ, and that immediately, you know, is the same thing as saying that this plane, as I would go, you know, this, there's an open boundary condition in this direction, this is a surface state. Below the vowel node, I have no, um, 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 Chiral mode above the vowel node, I have a chiral mode, okay? So now, there's two things I can do with this chiral mode, right? First thing I can do is um, I can take it around and end it in the same vowel node, if I could have just one vowel node on the lattice. But that's nonsensical, because if I end it in the same vowel node, it would mean that this has whole conductance one, and this has whole conductance one. So, I mean, there's no change in whole conductance below the vowel node and above the vowel node. But I've just proved that there is. Right? So, the only thing that makes sense is to end this Fermi arc in another vowel node. Okay? And another vowel node, you end it, and then this is, these planes had whole conductance. Um, Zero, this plane says whole conductance one, and this plane says whole conductance zero again. And this is basically telling you that these two vials have exactly opposite, opposite uh, monopole number, right? So if I was to compute the change from here to here would be plus one, the change from here to here would be minus one in whole conductance. You, e you gain an edge state, you lose an edge state. So these are called Fermi arcs. And they're part of the reason why, you know, the vial physics has kind of formed a resurgence in condensed matter. They were pointed out by Ashvin um, a few years ago. Okay? And again, the reason why they're so neat is that they would not exist in a purely two dimensional system. You can never have a Fermi surface that looks like this, right? The Fermi surface needs to end somewhere. It needs to be continuous. You can never have a Fermi surface that looks discontinuous. Of course, here, the Fermi surface only looks discontinuous, but the localization of these edge states, so there's, when I have an edge state, I can ask how deeply does it go into the bulk? How deeply does it, does it propagate into the bulk? Well, when I sit here, it doesn't propagate very deeply in the bulk because there's no, this point in the bulk is not very close to any, to any 
is not very close to any um, gapless point. But the moment I get closer and closer to the val node, I get closer and closer to a gapless state, which is the val node. And these edge or surface states become more and more delocalized in the bulk. Exactly when I touch the val node, they mix with the node. They go through the surface. And if I was to plot, of course, the, the other surface, this is this other surface, the surface back here, what they would look like, there would be another Fermi arc on the other surface. So basically, there's kind of a connectivity between two surfaces that you have here and the projections of vials on the two surfaces closer to me and on the other side of the sample give you two Fermi arcs. Okay, so it is a closed Fermi surface, but it's kind of a closed Fermi surface when you've got boundaries that goes from one surface through a Fermi arc through the vial node to the other surface through another Fermi arc to the other vial node back onto the first surface. Okay? So that's kind of interesting. Why is, there, why is this happening? What? That's very smart. <laughs> OK. So um, OK, so any questions about Fermi arcs? The point is this can be observed experimentally, and they have been observed experimentally. So any questions about, about these? Yes. Which Fermi point? That's right. You have that's the that's the that's the that's the remarkable I don't know, not remarkable thing that's the neat thing. It doesn't matter what Fermi energy you pick. Since it's a chiral mode, okay, it's a chiral mode. You're gonna cross it where you pick it. So. Now, of course. This, it's a very good point that you brought, this thing here is, I pick my Fermi energy so I sit exactly at the valve node in the valve. But I can choose not to do that. Okay, I can choose to pick my Fermi energy to sit here. Okay, now what happens is that now I have a vial Fermi surface, which is here, I have another one here, but out of these ones there's still a Fermi R coming. Now I can pick my Fermi surface to be even further, right? So there's a file node here and here. Okay, I can pick my Fermi surface to be even further. The Fermi surfaces will get bigger, but as long as the Fermi surfaces of the two files are disconnected in the bulk, there will be a Fermi arc coming from one and moving into the other. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if I have this, there will be a Fermi level in a system with finite bandwidth where these two Fermi surfaces will touch. Okay? And you can see exactly where it is. It's exactly where the valves connect. And when they touch, the, the um, Fermi arc disappears. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Okay. So, now that I'm done with this, I want to go back and actually, you know, point out that in any, again, in any, any condensed matter system has Fermi arcs. You don't have to find vials in them. In any condensed matter system, it will have Fermi arcs. The point is, how big are they? So any f condensed matter system with time reversal symmetry. So let's say I have time reversal symmetry. You know, we struggle to find arcs in Fermi arcs and vials in, in weird materials, but if you don't have inversion symmetry, any time reversal invariant system will have Fermi arcs. Why? Well, as I said before, at time reversal invariant points, bands come in doublets. There's Kramer's theorem. So there's eight time reversal invariant points. Okay. And around these time reversal invariant points, the Hamiltonian is k dot sigma. This is spin with time reversal. If you don't have any other symmetries, this is momentum. 
And the Hamiltonian looks vilish around these time reversal invariant points. Right? It is a vile Hamiltonian. Now, you know, just take a model, sine ki sigma i. Okay, i goes from one to three. So, if you take this Hamiltonian and now put your Fermi level somewhere at, you know, zero here, well, what you're gonna see is the following. You're gonna see that there's a Val node with monopole charge or turn number plus here, minus here, plus here, minus here, plus here, sorry, minus here, plus here, minus, plus. Okay? Just believe me, you can you can do you can do the you can do the calculation. You just need to do this. You just need to integrate the field strength. Remember the field strength looks like F i j is epsilon i j L k L over k cubed, but with a plus or minus in front. Okay, a plus or minus depends on the signs. You know, the Hamiltonian is k dot sigma here. Here is k x sigma x plus k y minus k y sigma y plus k z sigma z. So it changes a sign. That flip of the sign in k just flips this. Okay. All right. So if I choose a surface that looks kind of like this, for example, where these, where these, where these two vowel nodes project on top of each other, then on my surface Fermi sur surface, so I just, I just cut the material on some surface, okay? I have my surface Brion zone has four time reversal invariant points, okay? And, and, I've argued that, you know, vials, since, you know, there's vials at time reversal invariant points in the bulk, they have to project to time reversal invariant points in the bulk, do project to time reversal invariant points on the surface. It might be two time reversal invariant points in the bulk projecting to the same time reversal invariant point on the surface. Not it might be, it is always. But the point is, um, the surface also has time reversal invariant points, which are the projection of time reversal invariant points in the bulk. So they're the projection of vials, okay? Now what happens when you've got vials? You've got Fermi arcs, right? So let's draw them, let's draw the vials with a little bit of a Fermi surface, just so that they, you know, it doesn't matter, just because the picture will look nicer, okay? So how can I have Fermi arcs coming out of a vial and going to another vial, right? Well, I can have one of them being like this, for example, okay? Is this a good, is this a good Fermi arc in a time reversal invariant system? Why not? Somebody's shaking their head. Why not? So why isn't this good Fermi arc in a time reversal invariant system? Well, time reversal has to be preserved on the surface, right? Time reversal is local. Anything on the surface has to be time reversal invariant. This is the Brian's on the surface. Does this Fermi arc look like this time reversal invariant? No. So this situation cannot exist, but the following situation can exist. Okay? And this is a time reversal invariant scenario. And you can always prove now what what, what would what like what would happen if you know how would you get two of them? Well we know that one Fermi arc comes, of one, comes out of one, one vowel node, so two Fermi arcs will come out of two vowel nodes. So the projection of this point on the surface has to be two vowel points of the same topological charge in the bulk. But that we know always happens in time reversal invariant systems because two time reversal invariant points project to one time reversal invariant surface point. Okay? So we always know, you know, the, the Fermi arc pattern will be consistent. We always know that, that um, um, if I have a time reversal invariant system, I will have Fermi arcs, at least on some surfaces, between some of the projections of the um, time reversal invariant um, um, uh, points on the surface. Now, what I drew there is highly exaggerated on physical grounds. It's perfectly fine on fundamental 
grounds, that's always what's, what's supposed to happen. There's vials in every time reversal invariant system. Just tune to the Kramer's point and you'll find them and you'll find Fermi arcs. What's the issue there? Well, the issue there is that, for example, most time reversal invariant systems with spin splitting, so bands look something like this, okay? That situation exaggerated, and that situation bands would look something like this, okay? So bands in a time reversal invariant system look something like this. These are the time reversal invariant points, zero and pi, for example, zero and pi. Okay, that situation that I drew there, this Hamiltonian sine ki sigma i looks like this. Okay, and if you put your Fermi level here, you'll see Fermi arcs between things in that Hamiltonian. Now, that situation is unrealistic in condensed matter system because this is the amount of spin orbit coupling. Okay, the splitting between bands is the delta SO. So you would need the splitting between bands to actually be the bandwidth. Okay, so you need spin orbit coupling as large as the bandwidth of the system in order to actually see them fully separated. What's more likely to happen and always happens is that the spin orbit coupling term is very small and proportional to uh, what Alexander, for example, showed the Rashba term is k cross sigma is proportional to k. But you always have this k squared term which is bound to take over and it takes over quite fast. And this k squared term is what causes this uptick, right? And this is quite large. This is the bandwidth term, right? So this will always win and the situation will look like this. If the situation look like, looks like this, imagine it in all three dimensions, how would the projection of the Fermi arc look? Of how would the projection, there's still a vowel node here, but what would the, what would the surface projection of this Fermi surface look like? How will the Fermi surface look on a surface? How many, crossing any line is how many points? Four? How would it look? So crossing any line is four points. Like two concentric circles. Thank you. Very good. Where will the Fermi arcs come from? Well, what will, how will the Fermi arcs look? Well, there is a vial node here, so I know that the, there's a Fermi arc. Okay, they'll look like this. There's gonna be small, shitty Fermi arcs coming out of this and moving here, right? So any condensed matter system that's got time reversal will have these Fermi arcs, except it's gonna be kind of hard to see in most experimental situations, okay? If you find an experimental material that has a spin orbit coupling that controls your bandwidth, then you're golden because you're gonna have Fermi arcs moving between time reversal invariant points. You're gonna have huge Fermi arcs moving across the lattice, you know? So, um, okay. All right, so last thing that I wanted to do is, yes. Yes, you have to, yes, so you project both the vowel nodes. So the vowel nodes have some, the, the fundamental, if I have a 3D Brillouin zone, the fundamental um, uh, con constraint on the vowel nodes is that all their chirality sum up to zero, okay? So I have to, I, I'll have four minuses and four pluses. That, so that's, if you, depending on which surface you choose. Right, so, so yeah, you could, have, you could have surfaces on which you don't find anything. Like for, that's always the case, for example, if I have two vials like this, if I project on the surface that's, that's if I have two vials with plus and minus, if I project on a surface that looks down on them, I won't see anything. So you always have to find a surface, but there's always the case that you, you there's always the case that no matter which surface you choose, two vials project onto the same time reversal invariant point. Right. Now, you have to find that you have two pluses and two minuses. So you just have to pick your surface. Right. Very good. That's a very good question. Thank you. Okay. All right. So the, next, the last thing that I wanted to do is show you how a topological insulator comes out of vials.
both in three dimensions and in four dimensions. So in, four di in three dimensions, it's, it's kind of neat. Because in three dimensions, you can get the time reversal topological insulator out of vials. So I'm going to look at systems with time reversal. And I said that for systems without time reversal, the minimum number of vials is two. For systems with time reversal, the minimum number of vials is how many? Why? Sorry? So, so there you go. So these are, so, 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 so this is uh, where I confused you a bit. So there's always eight of them at time reversal invariant points. But if I want to get them at a non-time reversal invariant point, non-trim, like for example, have something like this, have, have you know, something like this at a non-time reversal invariant point, how many of them would have to be? And the answer is four, OK? But four vials, I want four vials at non time reversal invariant points. There's always going to be eight vials at every, in every, in every, you know, eight vials times the number of bands you have. So eight, eight is per each two bands. Okay, because this is a doublet, this time reversal doublet, and there's eight for each of them. So, you know, if you have 20 bands, you're going to have 160 in the whole system. Far away or from the Fermi level, but you will have them. But I want to find out how many you can have at non-time reversal invariant points. And the answer is the minimal number is four. And you can understand it in the following way. And the following way is, let's start with two bands. This is a sum k away from the prion zone. We just start with two bands. And if I put my Fermi level here, they're gapped. What's, what's, the, 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 what's, what, what's the Fermi surface if my Fermi level is here? No Fermi surface. So what's the churn number of, of, the, of a Fermi surface, of the Fermi surface? Zero, because I don't have any Fermi surface. So then I'm trying to make these cross. Can I make them cross like this? in a vial node immediately. So I make them cross like k dot sigma. Could I make them cross like this? And why couldn't, so I can't make them cross like this. Like, why can't I? If I made them cross like this, I could like, since this is a gap, I could put my Fermi level here a little bit away. This is a spherical Fermi surface. What does it have around the vial? number of okay so I can't go this is zero this is one and we just argued that this the, the turn number has to be conserved so what I'm actually going to create is this where I create turn number one vial here and turn number minus one vial here okay so at some point in the Brion zone I'm going to create in order to induce a band crossing at some point in the Brion zone, okay, I need to, at some point in the Brion zone that's not a time reversal invariant point. Time reversal invariant point, I always have vials, but they're stuck there. I can't do anything with them unless I break time reversal. So if I am at some, some non time reversal invariant point and I'm trying to make two bands touch, I make two vials plus and minus, OK? Now, these two vials, if I project them on the surface, if I make a surface in this direction, what will they have between them? Huh? Fermi arc. OK? And if I have time reversal, so this, this is the gamma point. If I have time reversal, for every vial that exists here, I'll have another vial here, right? So for this one, I'll have one here. For this one, 
I'll have one at minus k. Now the only thing that I'm left with, and I'll know that these guys also have a Fermi arc between them. The only thing that I'm left, is, left with is to determine their monopole charge. What do you think it is? Or what do you think this one is? Why? Same as this, but why? So this is this this is the this is how this is how the monopole charges are. So plus minus. Well, this sorry, this there's a there's a projection on the surface. There's a there's a there's a Fermi arc here. Okay. So why why are they plus and why why is, why are time reversal invariant vials um, of the same monopole charge? Well. We said that this Berry curvature under time reversal flips. Okay, this is just a magnetic field in momentum space. Magnetic fields flip under time reversal. And momentum also flips. So this is true. But we know that divergence of B is the monopole charge. This is like a magnetic field, right? This is the monopole charge, which is located at the vial node, OK? So now it's pretty clear that when I flip B, I also flip K to minus K, and this remains constant. Yeah? OK, so if I create these vials, then can these vials um, annihilate, can I take this one and annihilate it at the origin with this one? So for example, can I make a path where I take this one and annihilate it at the origin with this one? Just, just you know, guess. I mean, you know, say something. No, why? Same charge. So the only thing that I can do is there's only one path that I can take where I can create a band crossing and close it again. That wouldn't be very nice because I, I just haven't done anything. I want to do something non-trivial. So what I can do is in a time reversal invariant fashion, move this guy here, or at the same time move this guy here, take a trajectory, move this guy here, move this guy here. This is a plus and a minus. This can annihilate. This is a plus and a minus. This can annihilate. But what are you left behind? So they annihilate and they gap the full system. What are you left behind with? A circular Fermi surface. There's a Fermi arc here. As I take it, this Fermi arc extends. The circular Fermi surface. Where have you seen this? Yeah. This is a topological insulator Fermi surface. So this just told you that the transition between a trivial insulator to a time reversal TI happens through a vial semi-metal phase. OK? So it's not a critical point. It's a metallic phase. And that metallic phase is a vial semi-metal phase. And as we mentioned that, that vials come in pairs in three dimensions, if I just have one vial, what must that be? So I'm violating a doubling theorem. So where, what, what can, what was the only way that I can have one vial? Surface of something that's four dimensional. And that's a 4D quantum Hall effect. Okay. And since we argued that vials are compatible with time reversal symmetry, in fact, I find them at time reversal symmetric points, um, it must be that this 4D quantum whole state is also compatible with time reversal symmetry. 